this video, we will be covering some of the muscles of the thigh and the hip. We'll begin by reviewing the muscle attachments and their actions, which will be visually represented using our skeleton. And then we'll move through a yoga flow that draws attention to these muscle groups. I promise that this is the most material heavy video, so stick with me as we make our way through. Let's start with the muscles of the hamstrings. The hamstrings are comprised of three muscles, the biceps femoris, semimembranosus, and semitendinosus. All of these muscles proximally attach at the ischial tuberosity. In the case of the biceps femoris, the long head proximally attaches at the ischial tuberosity, while the short head proximally attaches along the linea aspera on the upper two-thirds of the proximal femur. Both the long and short head of the biceps femoris distally attach at the head of the fibula, right here. As you can see, shortening of the biceps femoris leads to extension of the thigh at the hip. Additionally, shortening or contraction of the biceps femoris draws the head of the fibula relatively closer to the muscle's proximal attachment at the ischial tuberosity, which also causes flexion of the leg at the knee. Because the biceps femoris crosses over two joints, the hip and the knee, it's able to enact two different movements over one at each of these joints. The semimembranosus and semitendinosus are very similar to the biceps femoris in the journey they take to their attachments. Both of these also proximally attach at the ischial tuberosity and only differ in their distal attachments. The semimembranosus proximally attaches at the ischial tuberosity and makes its way across to distally attach at the posteromedial surface of the proximal tibia, right here. The semitendinosus also proximally attaches at the ischial tuberosity and makes its way down to distally attach at the upper inner surface of the proximal tibia. Both of these muscles, when contracted, cause extension of the thigh at the hip. Also, as both of these muscles contract, they are able to draw their distal attachment closer to the proximal attachment at the ischial tuberosity, which causes flexion of the leg at the knee. Again, just like the biceps femoris, both of these muscles cross over both the hip and the knee, which means that they are able to cause movement at both of these joints. Moving to the front of the thigh, we have the quadriceps muscles. As the name suggests, the quadriceps is comprised of four different muscles, the rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and vastus intermedius. All of these muscles proximally attach along the ilium and the shaft of the femur. They distally attach onto the tibial tuberosity via the patellar tendon. Just like the hamstrings, the quadriceps muscles cross over two joints, the hip and the knee, and therefore are responsible for movement at both of these joints. At the knee, as the muscle shortens, the tibial tuberosity is drawn anteriorly, which causes extension of the leg at the knee. Looking more proximally, contraction of the muscle also causes flexion of the thigh at the hip. Now, continuing down to the lower leg, we'll start talking about the gastrocnemius. This powerful muscle proximally attaches at the distal femur and distally attaches at the calcaneus via the calcaneal tendon. Just like the quads and the hamstrings, the gastrox crosses over two joints, the knee and the ankle. So it causes movement at both of these joints. At the level of the knee, shortening of the muscle causes flexion of the leg at the knee. At the level of the ankle, shortening of the muscle draws the calcaneus superiorly, causing the toes to point down or plantar flexion of the foot at the ankle. The soleus is a deeper calf muscle. It proximally attaches at the tibia and the fibula, and it also distally attaches onto the calcaneus via the calcaneal tendon. As the muscle shortens, it is responsible for plantar flexion, and you can see this happening as the toes point downward. The next set of muscles that we will cover before moving into yoga poses that cover the lower extremity are the hip flexor and hip extensor muscles. The, major, the two major hip flexor muscles that we will discuss are the iliacus and the psoas major. Together, these muscles are known as the iliopsoas. 
the iliacus muscle proximally attaches at the upper two-thirds of the inner surface of the ilium, up to the inner lip of the iliac crest, to the anterior sacroiliac joint. It hooks over the anterior aspect of the pubic bone to distally attach at the lesser trochanter of the femur. The psoas major proximally attaches along the transverse processes, discs, and bodies of lumbar vertebra 1 through 5, as well as the body of the 12th thoracic vertebra. So that is right here, all along here. Just like the iliacus, the psoas major hooks over the anterior aspect of the pubic bone to distally attach on the lesser trochanter of the femur. The iliopsoas is responsible for flexion of the thigh at the hip. As you can see, by taking this journey over the pubic bone, as these muscles shorten, they are able to lift the lesser trochanter up, and therefore the whole femur is lifted, causing flexion of the thigh at the hip. The gluteus maximus is the major hip extensor that we will discuss today. The gluteus maximus proximally attaches at the posterior surface of the ilium and distally attaches at the gluteal tuberosity of the proximal femur. It also distally attaches along the iliotibial band, although the IT band is not visualized on a skeleton model. As the gluteus maximus shortens or contracts, it draws the femur posteriorly with relation to the pelvis, which causes extension of the thigh at the hip. Now that we've reviewed the major muscles, their attachments and actions of the lower extremity, we can move on to our yoga flow. This flow will begin with poses that stretch each of the various muscles that we've talked about. By doing a pose that stretches out the muscle, we're able to identify where the muscle is in the body. To be clear, when we stretch the muscle, we're usually in a pose that is doing the opposite action of what that muscle is responsible for. We'll be assisted in our yoga flow by our yoga model, Ariana. You can begin in a seated pose and then make your way onto your hands and knees to a tabletop pose. You can bring the shoulders over the wrists and the hips over the knees, making sure you're rolled out onto the tops of the toes. If you'd like here, you can take a couple rounds of cat and cow dropping the belly on the inhale, letting the gaze go up to the sky, shoulders pulling back. And with the exhale, tucking the tailbone under, one backbone at a time, allowing the chin to tuck into the chest. With the next inhale, make your way back to a flat back table. And on the next breath in, you can let the left leg extend out behind you. And on the exhale, bring the left foot to plant in between the right and left hand. You can position the back foot to, to accentuate the stretch, letting the foot scoot back, dropping the knee, and rolling onto the tops of the right toes. We'll experience a deep psoas stretch here. And on the inhale, you can bring your right and left hand to plant on just above the left knee, interlacing the fingers, letting the shoulders roll back. Lengthen with the inhale, and on the exhale, you might go a little bit deeper into that lunge on the front leg, noticing that by contracting the hamstrings, you can create a deeper stretching sensation for the psoas muscle on the opposite side. If you'd like to palpate the psoas muscle here, you can go ahead and bring the right hand onto the right anterior superior iliac spine, the tip of your hip bone. You can bring the fingers in about one inch and then down about two inches. And you'll notice that there is a muscle belly that is very taut as it is stretched out deep in this lunge. Here, as we have extension of the thigh at the hip, we experience a deep psoas stretch, which is our hip flexor. You can go ahead and bring the right hand back onto the knee, letting the shoulders roll back. Using the next inhale, let the arms lift up over the head. And exhale, bring the hands to surround the foot once more walking the hands back gently as you make your way into a half split pose for a nice hamstring stretch. The hips will come just about over the right knee and the left heel will be planted with the left toes lifted up. To deepen the stretch on the inhale, lengthen through the spine, taking the gaze out in front of you. And on the exhale, hinge from the hips, bringing the face down closer to the knee. Noticing the space that opens up in the hamstring, in the hamstrings on the left side. Here you'll notice that you have the left leg extended at the knee and you have the left thigh flexed at the hip. 
the hamstrings is normally responsible for the opposite of those actions, extension of the thigh at the hip and flexion of the leg at the knee. And so by in half splits pose, you experience a deep hamstring stretch. With the next inhale, you can take the gaze forward once more. And on the exhale, walk the hands back. And go ahead and step the foot back to meet in a tabletop pose. On the next inhale, let the right leg extend back and bend the right knee in towards the body. Let the left hand lift off of the mat and reach the left hand back for the top of the right foot. Work to kick the right foot into the hand, noticing that as you kick it, you deepen the extension that you have at the right thigh. And here you have a pretty deep quadricep stretch as you let the thigh extend at the hip and the leg flex at the knee. On the inhale, you can kick into the pose maybe a half inch deeper. And on the exhale, you can release the bind and return to your hands and knees. We'll take the same few poses on the other side to balance out the stretch. On the next inhale, let the right leg extend back behind you. And on the exhale, bring the right foot to plant in between the two hands. On the inhale, you can lengthen. And on the exhale, you can let the left leg scoot back a bit, rolling out onto the tops of the toes. And when you're ready, you can bring right hand and left hand to interlace on top of the right knee. Again, to exaggerate the stretch, you can contract the hamstrings gently. Notice that as you allow yourself to flex into the lunging leg, you deepen the stretch on the contralateral psoas muscle. If you'd like here, you can close the eyes and find the breath as it moves into that space, working to keep the length in the spine, working to stay grounded through the places in which your body contacts the mat. On the next inhale, you can release the bind and let the arms lift up to the sky, taking the gaze up. And on the exhale, you can plant the hands around the foot and then walk the hands back gently to find your way into a hamstring stretch with a half splits pose. The right toes lift off of the mat. On the inhale, the gaze goes forward as you lengthen the spine. And on the exhale, you can hinge from the hips and full, bring the face closer to the knee. Once again, finding a deep hamstring stretch as you flex the thigh at the hip and as you extend the right leg at the knee. When you're ready on the next inhale, you can let the gaze go forward, letting the spine lengthen, shoulders roll back. And on the exhale, walk the hands back towards the right foot, hands surrounding the foot, making your way back to a tabletop pose. We'll take our final quadricep stretch on the left side, letting the left leg extend back behind you, bending the left knee in so that the foot comes closer to the body, and then allowing the right hand to reach back for the top of the left foot. You can kick the left foot into the right hand to deepen the extension that you have at that leg and create a deeper stretch for the quadriceps muscle on the left side. Continue to stay with the movement of the breath. Maybe letting each breath help you get a deeper version of the pose. And when you're ready on the next inhale, you can lift up maybe just another half inch into the pose with the exhale, release the bind, unwind and plant both the hands and the feet back down onto the ground, returning to a tabletop pose. You can tuck your toes under and on the next breath, lift your knees to the back of the room, hips lifting up to the sky, moving into a downward facing dog. The hands can plant deep into the earth really thinking about all five fingertips pressing into the mat, letting the shoulders roll back. Maybe taking a couple of full breaths here in through the nose and out through the mouth, releasing completely. When you're ready on the next inhale, you can take the gaze forward and on the exhale, tiptoe the feet up to meet the hands. With the inhale, lengthen, bringing the back flat like a table 
And on the exhale, hinge at the hips, folding the body in towards the legs. This is a forward fold, or tasana. Here, in order to emphasize the stretch that we can get in the gluteus maximus from a forward fold, we'll put a deep bend in the knees. You can soften the upper body onto the thighs, and you'll notice that here we're flexing the thighs at the hip. By doing so, we create a deep gluteus maximus stretch, since the glutes are normally responsible for extension of the thigh at the hip. On the inhale, you can lift up halfway once more, bringing the back flat like a table, and then start rolling your way up. Inhaling one backbone at a time, allowing the arms to lift up and over the head, drawing the hands into heart center. Closing the eyes here, maybe taking a breath to recenter. And on the inhale, let the arms lift back up once more, circling up to the sky. And on the exhale, you can sink your hips back right away into a chair pose. Find the hips sinking back and find the knees working to move back so that they're exactly over the ankles or at least moving in that direction. When you look down at your toes, you should still be able to see all 10 toes. You can keep the gaze up to the fingertips, rolling the shoulders back. And as you start to feel your muscles working to hold you still in this pose, we can take a look at our joint positions. We have flexion of the thigh at the hip and flexion of the leg at the knee. Work to sit down maybe one inch lower on the next exhale. Where do you feel the work coming from? The quadriceps is probably where you feel the most intensity. The quads are partially responsible for hip flexion here, which is why you feel them working. On the next inhale, you can let the right hand come to the low back and you can gently press the low back into the hand in order to help you tuck your pelvis in. You'll notice that this engages the core a little more and it might give you a stretch in the glutes. Go ahead and bring your right hand back up to the sky. The gluteus maximus is normally responsible for extension of the thigh at the hip. So with this flexion in Utkatasana, we feel a slight stretch there. This is somewhat of an isometric contraction. Given that gravity would want to pull the hips down all the way to the ground, our glutes are also engaged in firing in order to maintain some amount of extension. The dual action of flexors and extensors in this pose helps us to hold still. With the next breath in, reach upward for length and then exhale and release the pose, coming to a forward fold. Inhale, lifting up halfway. And on the exhale, you can plant your hands on the mat and step your way back to a high plank. We'll lower down with a vinyasa, letting the elbows hug into the ribs as you come down in one straight line. And on the inhale, roll out onto the tops of the toes, letting the shoulders roll back, heart shining up to the sky with the exhale, tuck the toes under and let the hips work up to the sky as the shoulders pull back, returning to a downward facing dog. Here, we'll review our key body joint positions. Our ankles are dorsiflexed, especially as the heels sink back towards the earth, and we have extension of the leg at the knee. We can take this dog for a walk. You can bend the right knee in towards the earth as the left heel sinks back. Where do you feel a stretching sensation in the left leg? Most likely the calves and the hamstrings. The ankle here is further dorsiflexing. Since the gastrox and the soleus are responsible for plantar flexion, with this dorsiflexion, you feel a stretch in those muscles. Similarly, the hamstrings extend the thigh at the hip and flex the leg at the knee. In this pose, the thigh is flexed at the hip and the leg is extended at the knee. Therefore, we have a deep hamstring stretch. We can take this over to the other side, putting a bend in the left knee as the right heel sinks back to the earth. Here, we can notice which muscles are contracting to make this action possible. You might feel a slight contraction of the quadriceps as they flex the thigh at the hip in order to maintain the bend in that knee. On the next exhale, you can return to neutral, coming back to your downward facing dog. And on the next inhale, you can let the left leg lift up to the sky. And on the exhale, you can step the left foot in between the right and left hand. The right toes can pivot out to face the long side of the mat. And on the inhale, you can open up, windmilling the arms out, coming, bringing them parallel to the earth for warrior two. 
Virabhadrasana B. You can keep, you can make sure here that the left knee is working to stay exactly over the left ankle and that you have both hips facing the long side of the mat. Here, let's take a look at our different joint positions. At the lunging leg, we have flexion at the hip. Our quadriceps and our iliopsoas are contracting here to make this flexion possible. At both hips, we have lateral rotation, which we will discuss further in our next video. At the extended leg, we have extension at the hip joint, which is made possible by the gluteus maximus. At the lunging leg, we also have flexion of the leg, which is made possible by the hamstrings, gastrox. You'll notice that at the back leg, which is extended, contraction of the gluteus maximus allows for stretching of the ipsilateral psoas major. If you'd like to palpate your, your psoas muscle again, you're welcome to do so, bringing the right hand to the hip bone and then coming in an inch and then down two inches, palpating the belly of the psoas as it crosses over the pubic bone on its way to the lesser trochanter of the femur. You can bring your, your hand parallel to the earth once more and on the next exhale, you can lift out of the lunge, bringing both legs straight. With the inhale, you can let the right hand extend out over the edge of the mat. And on the exhale, you can flex downward to reach for the knee, the calf, or the ankle. Find whatever grip is comfortable for you as you make your way into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Here, we're working to make sure that the bend stays only in the side plane. You can let the left hip open up slightly to the sky and you can take the gaze up to the left fingertips as you let the left shoulder roll back. Taking a look at our joint positions, we'll notice that we have lateral rotation of our right hip and medial rotation of the left hip. There's lateral flexion of the spine and there's, deep, uh, there's a deep stretching sensation along the right hamstrings as well as the left side of the upper body. If you'd like to exaggerate the hamstring stretch, you can play with thinking about contracting the psoas major on the right side, noticing how this draws the ischial tuberosity or sit bone down further towards the back of the mat to open up a deeper hamstring stretch. On the next exhale, you can take the gaze back down to the, to the left toes. And on the inhale, you can lift out of the bend, bringing both hands parallel once more. With the exhale, put a bend in the left knee, lengthen through the inhale, and on the next exhale, let both hands windmill back around to surround the left foot, stepping your way back to a high plank, holding through that plank, and with the exhale, lowering down elbows, hugging the ribs, inhale, rolling out onto the tops of the toes, heart shining up to the sky, and on the exhale, tucking the toes under, letting the hips rise to a downward facing dog. We'll take the same poses on the other side for balance, with the next inhale, letting the right toes lift up to the sky. And on the exhale, letting the right foot step in between the two hands, letting the left toes pivot out to face the long side of the mat. On the inhale, both arms open out, coming parallel to the earth. As the body turns to face the long side of the mat, shoulders rolling back, maybe closing the eyes, taking a couple full rounds of breath. As you continue engaging and contracting the different parts of the body that are working here, paying attention to the quadriceps as they engage to help you lunge a little bit deeper into that front leg, noticing the gluteus maximus as it helps you to get a little bit further with that extension in the back leg. On the next inhale, you can lift out of the lunge, bringing both legs straight with the exhale, reaching out over the edge of your mat, and then letting yourself bend towards your side, bringing the right hand to meet the ankle, calf, the, or the foot. You can let the gaze turn up to the left fingertips, rolling the left shoulder up towards the sky. Maybe closing the eyes in your triangle pose. Continuing to notice how, if you think about moving the pelvis towards the back of the mat, which involves a subtle contraction of the psoas muscle, you can really exaggerate the stretch that you get in the right hamstrings here. Use the inhale to lengthen. On the next exhale, you can turn the gaze back down to look at the right toes. And on the inhale, lift out of the 
out of the pose, bringing both hands parallel once more. With the exhale, find your way back into your warrior two. And exhale, you can bring both hands to surround the right foot, stepping your way back to your high plank. Lowering down, letting the elbows hug the ribs. Inhale, rolling onto the tops of the toes, the heart shines up to the sky. And exhale, tuck the toes under, hips lift up into a downward facing dog. When you're ready here, you can drop the knees down towards the earth. And you can let the knees spread apart towards the sides of the mat, rolling, letting the hips sink back towards the heel, and letting the forehead come down to the earth, the shoulders sinking back into a child's pose, taking rest for as long as you'd like. 